I'm El Wu, a client portfolio manager here at Thornburg Investment Management. I'm here today with Emily Lavelle, co-PM of the International Growth Strategy. We'll be talking today about why international. Emily, thank you for being here with us. So, Thanks, Al. Um, one of the things that have been discussed in the media outlets is the possibility of a recession being more likely in Europe than in the U.S. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that was certainly true last year. Um, a few things have changed that outlook a little bit. The, the main one actually is China. So the reopening in China has been a significant boost to the Eurozone. And the reason for that is um, European companies have in general more exposure to China than uh, US companies do. And also Chinese tourists are a really important driver of the European tourism economy. So as China has reopened, we've seen the forecasts for the Eurozone actually start to increase and expectations for a recession have faded. The last component of that that I think is also really important is um, the energy crisis in Europe, which where we have avoided the sort of worst case scenario that people thought might happen last year with a very cold winter requiring energy rationing, and that has not played out. Okay, that's really important. I mean, how does that tie into where valuations stand today? Like, what's priced in? Uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because the valuation gap between the U.S. market and international markets um, is almost as wide as it's ever been. So since the financial crisis, the S&P 500 has traded at a premium to um, the benchmark that we use in our strategy, the MSCI Acquiex U.S. Growth Index. But that premium or that discount has widened in uh, the last few years. And um, what's interesting right now is that because everyone thought that Europe was going to go into this very deep recession last year, uh, earnings expectations were cut pretty significantly. And now we're seeing actually this positive development from the reopening of China. And so we think that the expectations that are embedded in that price earnings multiple for our index and for um, a lot of the companies that we cover are much more reasonable and actually may have room to increase a little bit relative to the U.S. market where we think analysts are still not properly accounting for the slowdown in the economy that we expect will happen as a result of the Federal Reserve's increase in interest rates. Another trend that has been spoken about a lot recently is climate change. Climate change has been on the forefront of people's minds, especially ever since the U.S. enacted the Inflation Reduction Act. And we've also seen country after country make zero carbon pledges. How do you feel Europe is reacting to the IRA and what are they doing in response? And what are the investment opportunities that you see in Europe for climate change? So Europe really wants to be seen as a climate change leader. It's also really important to them because they're a net energy importer as opposed to the United States um, that has much more secured fossil fuel energy supply. The European Union has really focused on making sure that that fiscal stimulus that was allocated at the beginning of COVID is used and directed in ways that make it more competitive in the energy transition so that it doesn't fall behind some of the spending um, that the U.S. has enacted with the Inflation Reduction Act. So with the diversion of capital going to other areas, are there investment opportunities that you're excited about? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the capital that's going to be deployed globally in the next decade uh, in order to effectuate the energy transition and mitigate climate change presents really, really interesting investment opportunities, both in Europe and the US and um, everywhere else in, um, in the world. You know, on the supply side, obviously, um, we have the sort of build out of a new energy infrastructure. We think some of the picks and shovels behind the build out of that energy infrastructure could be really interesting. Um, you know, for example, high quality providers of um, materials and supply that go into building out the energy infrastructure. And then on the demand side, um, you know, um, the public will be, people will be quite incentivized, we think, to make their homes more efficient and build new homes and new buildings more efficiently. And so there are a number of um, companies that provide greener and more efficient building materials that are a more energy efficient way to heat and cool um, homes. And so we also think that there are some really interesting opportunities there. You know, the opportunities will make themselves more clear as we start to see the spending on the ground. 
Emily, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for your interest, Elle.